girls are supposed to have come here for a picnic. Some of them decided to break away from the main picnic party and climb and explore Hanging Rock. Some of them disappeared, some never to return. Picnic at Hanging Rock occupies an interesting place in popular culture. In the 50 plus years since the novel's publication, it has in a way become an urban legend. It's a story we know as 100% fiction, but the possibility of what if it's true still tugs at the back of some people's minds. The 1967 novel by Joan Lindsay was adapted into a film in 1979, directed by Peter Weir, and tells the story of an ill-fated outing undertaken by a group of Australian girls enrolled at the exclusive Appleyard School. The school, run by the stern Miss Appleyard, rises like an oasis at the Appleyard School, Miss Appleyard focuses on the education and grooming of refined and proper Victorian young ladies. These young girls, in a flush of excitement and anticipation, leave the school on the morning of Valentine's Day, 1900, and travel to the ancient geological formation of Hanging Rock for picnic. Contrary to the girls' school, Hanging Rock rises out of the landscape like a primordial fortress. The outing is a chance for the girls to let their hair down and take their gloves off. It offers a day of freedom away from their regimented lives and a chance to abandon themselves in relatively untouched nature. Then, sometime during the day, all of the watches stop. Light of the watch isn't stopped. Stopped at 12. Never stopped before. Then three of the girls, despite the warnings from Miss Appleyard, the rock itself is extremely dangerous. You are therefore forbidden any tomboy foolishness in the matter of exploration. Set off to climb the rock. Those girls, the popular and ethereal Miranda, the bright and scholarly Marion, and the wealthy and beautiful Irma, along with the fourth, Edith, tagging along at the last minute, go missing. The remainder of the story deals with the not-so-successful police investigation into the matter, the turmoil at the school in the aftermath of the disappearances, and the two young men who become entangled in the search. And the film is beautiful in its composition, its cinematography, and its evocative musical score. But the story is unsettling. The rock is unsettling. Not only to the girls and culturally valuable indigenous land, with colonialization, by the mid-1800s, the site became a popular destination for outings and picnics. And the indigenous population, established tribes who'd lived in the area for more than 26,000 years, was drowned out by a fictional story. Today, visitors climb to the top of the rock and they scream, Miranda! I rewatched the film a couple of times while researching for this video, and I realized just how much of the story is actually set on Hanging so Rock. I mistakenly That's thought cats. most scenes actually took place in the school, but most scenes play out on the rock. And the time spent there is transmitted to us as otherworldly and mysterious. Just like the girls, we are simultaneously enticed and scared by it. It's terrifying Don't in its play beauty. over there. While it's not explicitly Nigel. stated or even known what power the rock possesses, we know that there is some inexplicable energy there. Weir and cinematographer Russell Boyd film it looming over the girls, almost pulsating, and it feels as if the rock is watching. I've always felt that this scene so was the ancient but rock but actually like speaking the, through the girls. Not. But in contrast to the earthy browns, grays, and shades of green, the scenes in the school are all pastel, candy-colored, and overfilled with Victorian embellishments. Although the rock seems unsettling, it's been rooted in its place for millions of years. It's one of the most natural things in the environment. So it it's the school that's the actual intrusion on the landscape. And it should put us off with the order it tries to impose on the girls and on the land around it, with its imported greenery and peacocks. It's obviously the most unnatural thing. During the film, Irma is found, but we never know what happens to Miranda and Marion. And I'll even argue that the specifics of what happened to them isn't really very important anyway. When Irma is found, she has no memory of what happened. Edith, who comes screaming down the rock, couldn't remember anything either. What is important, however, is how the disappearance has a profound effect on those left behind. 
Several of the characters meet very tragic ends as they get caught up in the ripple effect of the chaos that the banishings create. The film ends abruptly with the freeze frame on Miss Appleyard and a voiceover detailing her fate. The body of Mrs. Arthur Appleyard was found at the base of Hanging Rock on Friday the 27th of March, 1900. Lindsay always felt bad for those who researched looking for details of the true story, but she was also often coy about whether or not aspects of the story of the missing girls were actually true. Spoiler, they're not. But without ever explaining it, she held tight to the story of her odd experience on that rock when she was three years old. So, maybe out there on Hanging Rock, something peculiar really did happen. And um, I saw this old lady, and I knew it had to be Joan Lindsay coming across the, towards me. So I stopped and was kind of waiting and watching her. And she came up to me and she just threw her arms around me. And while she uh, held me, she said, in my ear, Oh, Miranda, it's been so long. There are eight million stories in the Cinema Cities. This has been one.